In this video, I will briefly describe what the background landscape sections are and how to develop them for your own topics. I also will briefly describe the status quo or the base case or current state of affairs policy-wise and how to identify it for your own topics. The ungraded exercise for this week will help you apply the readings and this video to your research. The background section of your analysis presents facts to explain the problem and why it is being addressed. It is where your problem statement will be in surrogate. The section is not theoretical, nor is it subjective. It is all based on data. Think of it as answering the why question. Why is this a problem that decision makers care about? Make the case the problem is worthy of governmental attention and resources. This will build off of your problem and data visualization presentation that you submitted recently. The background section includes data to make the case that your problem is worthy of governmental attention. It's where your graphics and tables will be inserted in your policy analysis. The section is entirely data-based, based on epidemiologic and surveillance data. Tegelbaum and Walensky refer to this section as entirely informational. It's not partisan, it's not ideological. Just tell us the facts. Where will you obtain your data? This is based on your uh, data-related research from federal agencies, from state agencies, local research organizations, advocacy organizations, you name it. You'll want to rely on the best practices and data visualization here as well. The landscape section provides the context for your analysis. You'll discuss key stakeholders, including interest in advocacy groups, policymakers, the public, and target populations. The policy landscape section addresses the factors to consider when analyzing the problem. The key readings for this unit will be from Tagablam and Walensky and the Shrieke and Young readings. Key factors that you might consider will include political, economic, practical, social, and or legal factors. For this class, at a minimum, you'll want to address the political and economic factors, but hopefully other ones as well. Political factors get at issues like, is this a hot button topic? Is it controversial? Uh, where do key stakeholders stand on the issue? Do they have an opinion? Is there bipartisan support? Are there reasons to act now versus waiting to deal with the problem later? Is it a unique window of opportunity? Economic factors get at the economic and monetary impact if the problem were not addressed. Here you definitely want to address things like the cost to society. That could include monetary cost as well as lost lives, morbidity or mortality, lost productivity or absenteeism, insurance costs, and the like. Other things to consider under economic factors are how is this affecting the jurisdiction's budget or deficit? Is it costing the jurisdiction money to treat the problem? Basically, how is this problem affecting society or organizations in terms of the bottom line? Legal factors might be new. This is where you're getting at issues that are legal barriers to affecting the problem. So for example, has Congress given a regulatory agency the authority to issue regulations on a specific topic. If they don't have that authority, then they don't have the legal authority to regulate on an area. Another example might be if there's, if there's future litigation as a potential concern, which often is relevant for issues dealing with industry, such as pharma, tobacco, food and beverage, things like that. Practical factors get at issues of whether this is a realistic problem to try and solve. Are there possible public policy solutions for this problem? Thinking about that further in the coming weeks as we deal with policy alternatives and also when we're talking about market and government factors. If the problem can't be solved, are there reasons and ways to address the problem from a policy standpoint at this point in time? For social factors, you'll want to think about who is most affected by the problem. Is this an issue of equity, injustice, or fairness? Are there influential value groups, according to the client, who are most affected by the problem? Next week, when we deal with policy goals, you'll want to think about this in particular. If you've identified targeted universalism as a key policy goal, then you definitely need to be sure to address social factors in your policy landscape. More on that forthcoming. In the ungraded exercise for this week, you will want to identify which factors specifically apply to your problem and describe them in detail, backed up by evidence. Please note, not all factors will apply, so please do not send in a document that provides examples for every factor. Usually they're not all relevant. Hone in on the ones that are most relevant for your problem. The policy history helps you to explain, how did we get to where we are today relative to policymaking in this area? 
It includes the full range of policy actions taken to date. Be sure to consider the full range of things that governments do from Bardock Appendix B, and also consult the Shriki and Young reading for this week. Recall that prior decisions to do nothing were active decisions. So if nothing has happened to date, explain why and what challenges prevent something from being enacted. Where we find information on the policy history? Look at the policy database resources under resources in the Blackboard site. Through the library, you can search Lexis for access to state laws. You can also reach out to Rosie Henneke for help in where and how to locate this information. Just a reminder, she actually has a discussion board set up just for this course and has office hours both in person and online. I encourage you to reach out to her, not just for help with the policy history, but in locating information for your problem or background section. You should not reach out to her until you've attempted to locate material on your own so you can ask informed questions. The status quo, or the base case, represents the policies or governmental programs on the books in your jurisdiction of interest. As I noted on the prior slide, if there are no policies or programs on the books, then that is the status quo. The status quo is the alternative against which you will compare all other alternatives. As I have noted several times already in this presentation, you'll want to consult the Bargax Appendix B and the Shrieky and Young readings for a clear sense as to what's fair game for the status quo. As you can see from this slide, it includes a range of options, and it's not just legislation or regulations. It also includes things like appropriations or funding from the government for programs, it includes programs specifically funded by the government, it includes educational awareness campaigns operated by or funded by the government, and it includes research being supported by the government. One thing that always confuses students is that the status quo and your alternatives for that matter are not what advocacy organizations or private organizations may or may not be doing. The goal of this project is to understand what the government and your jurisdiction of interest has or has not done to address this problem. The other thing to know about the status quo is that it does not include things that have failed to pass or that are proposed. Those can be alternatives that may, you may eventually consider. Things that have failed to pass will be noted in your policy history, but your status quo would be nothing on the books if there's nothing currently. Things that have been proposed may be an alternative that you may consider, but they also are not the status quo. Finally, your focus with the status quo is what is on the books in your jurisdiction of interest. It does not include what your neighboring state or city is doing. If you're focused on national issues, it does not include what the states have done. That information can all be mentioned in the background section of your paper and might inform your other alternatives, but they are not part of the status quo.